we went to Vancouver as a result. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, so my first thing out there was the Playhouse Theatre. Hutch and Jane were, were two of the directors on it. It was from grade one to twelve. So right. you did three three plays, and uh, mm. Nikki was on it, and Ron was on it. Right. It's a great time. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, and there were must have been other offers in the mail that arrived eventually. Oh at well, Dad's yes, place. Like yes. Um, I got offers from Globe Theatre. I got from Marigold Charlesworth. Right. Which I wanted to do. Right. But right. then uh, my father replied to it and whatnot. <laughs> it so what did your father say? Oh, I don't know. We <laughs> had a little tiff about that. <laughs> no, no kidding. He didn't like that. Did your father he accept you being an actor? Did your father? Well, that's why he put me in architecture. He didn't think there right. would be anything for me. In he was proud of what I was doing, mm -hmm. but uh, he didn't see any future in it for me either. So, right. But then. It so happens years later, mm. not too long after, I did work with Marigold and Jean oh. for the National Arts Center when they opened the first tour they did from the National Arts Center for schools. Uh. Yeah. Oh, huh. <laughs> what was the show? There again, it was an amalgam of, of pieces. A different show. For right. a school tour again. Teaching about Shakespeare and. Yeah. yeah. I bet you were doing some Julius Caesar in there? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. Listen, um, one thing that came out of the exercise at the theater school, mm -hmm. there was a, a, a play with astronauts, or at least there were two, two plays on one bill. Okay. Right? Uh, so the set in the, 20, to the 2020 and uh, 21st century anyway. Mm -hmm. So I figured there'd be something there for me, right? So right. Uh, asked for an audition. And, and I was told there's nothing for me in the play, so they wouldn't audition me. Okay. Something comes up uh, for a brother and two sisters that John Giuliani is going to direct. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Nothing in there for me because I'm a black actor. There aren't any black women acting in Vancouver. There <laughs> aren't any many black men. One other guy I knew. Mm -hmm. So. Mm. I didn't. One day I got a call from John saying, Arden, have you read my play? No. no. First of all, he said, you didn't come to audition. I said, no. He says, why not? I said, uh, well, I heard it's a family of a boy and two girls. He says, oh, okay, but have you read the play? No. Okay. I'd like you to read it mm -hmm. and read it and tell me what you think. So I read it. I called him, invited me to lunch at the place next to the, the art gallery. Right. So we sat down discussing the play and so on. It was written by a Cuban guy, Jose Triano. It's revolutionary in the sense that these children are plotting to kill their parents and taking out all the anger on their parents and all the things they did and so on. Mm -hmm. So talking about it, uh, he said, you know what? I'd like you to play the part. Yeah, but you don't have any. He says, no, no, never mind that. I want you to play the part because you have mm -hmm. the essence of what, what, what I He said, I'd never forget. It still rings in my head mm -hmm. what you did in that exercise at the theater school a couple of years ago. Hmm. I, I was playing Titus Andronicus. <laughs> so no. anyway, mm -hmm. so I got it. I, I did, did the role, and um, it was quite an exercise. Mm -hmm. The whole studio, this was the arts club. Mm -hmm. The whole place was the set. Right. So the stage essentially was in the middle, but any place, a shaft coming down and things coming from up there. Hmm. And there's a table in the middle, a light with a pull. And around it, chairs and benches and course the seats are rigged and you had clothing hanging and whatnot so you had maximum medium and minimum seating <coughs> okay minimum was up in the back medium is in between and maximum would be like this is a chair mm -hmm. I'm supposed to sit here but you're allowed to sit right so one of the girls may push me into your lap 
And then okay. come and start to slap me up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and another mm -hmm. piece was a, a box. Uh, somebody would sit in it, but you'd, you'd have to volunteer, right? <laughs> sit in it and they'd be twisting it around like somebody like in the Chicago trial and beating it and there's a whole big... Um, These are audience members that would do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One was to be rolled in a carpet. <laughs> okay. You rolled in the carpet and you put it and you're lying there watching this stuff. And one of the things I had to do was take this knife and stab that thing 49 times. <laughs> Why 49 times? Because it's written 49 times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a lot. For stage <laughs> yes, time? Yes. I mean, but 10 seconds is forever in stage time. This is John Giuliani. Right, okay. Savage God himself. Okay. Every production, he called it the Savage God production. Hmm. But he was very daring and very... One of the things we used to do was go to Simon Fraser University hmm. and uh, UBC. Right. In the cafeteria, lunchtime, everything's busy and so on. Hmm. And start doing some a piece from the play. Right. To draw focus and, and hmm. you know... And so he was experiencing, what, and when was this? What, what this uh, was 69, uh, 69. Hmm. Wow, because that's like at the forefront of that kind of, you know. It went a little further. Mm -hmm. As the piece went on, well, he, he also had a questionnaire. Mm -hmm. What you like, what you didn't like, be, 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 be. Really? You know, nobody men mentioned anything about the fact that I was black and the girls were white. No. Ja Jackie Cross and Nikki Lip. Right. But as the piece went on, bits and pieces of the set would be taken away hmm. until the last night. There was hmm. just the table and the chairs around, the knife and the rug. Wow. <laughs> huh. So you were acting just bare acting. Okay, so this guy hires you. Doesn't matter. He doesn't care about your color. He just cares no. that you're a no. good actor. Did yeah. you run into the other director a little later on? Oh yes, yes. Now the interesting thing about the guy who didn't have me do his play before. Mm -hmm. First day I show up on the th uh, for rehearsals with John and Nikki and Jackie. Mm -hmm. Who is the stage manager? Mm -hmm. The same guy who didn't want me to do his play. Really. Hmm. So how did and that? So it's Mr. Best, how are you? So I never let him call me Arden. <laughs> <laughs> fair, <laughs> that sounds fair enough Mr. to me. Yeah, sure. Because and so how did he react to you? Did he say anything? Did he apologize? No, 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 no. Oh, I, I had it out with them before because mm -hmm. um, after I'd seen the play, I went opening night just to see what's you know. I'd st I met him a few weeks after that in the theater office, mm -hmm. and I started to ask him about why I couldn't play and, mm -hmm. play and so on. I wasn't rude or anything, but I was asking him questions with a wry smile and mm -hmm. pointedly asking him questions. Right. And finally he got, Gee, why don't you leave me alone? Right. He just wouldn't say, right. because you're black. Right. <laughs> As yeah. you say in South Africa, because yeah. you're black. Right, right. And that's how, <laughs> I'm sure that that experience has, has happened a few times. Uh, does it, did it ever discourage you? Was there ever a point in time? You no, know? no, 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 no. See, see, I've always said I'm an actor because uh, I'm stupid or a masochist or both. <laughs> 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 okay, and I like right. to make an ass of myself, mm -hmm, see? So, right. so. But no, no right. w when, when you're in a battle, when you're fighting, I it's, not as bad as you hear it outside. Right. I've been in Montreal when there were bombings and so on. I'd stayed at the Hotel Nelson. I don't know if you know. That's mm -hmm. where a lot of the FLQ guys used to stay and so on. Mm -hmm. And I, you'd hear about this. I heard bombs. I stayed at a place where I passed by and the whole place was shattered. Mm -hmm. People were dead inside and so on. But you don't feel as bad as when you hear it outside. Outside, right. You know. right. Uh, but no. Uh, I always had, if they can do it, I can do it too. See, mm -hmm. I didn't have any, anyone to follow in Canada. Right. Nobody to look up to and say, well, I, I was all on my own. Right. Because who were the other black actors at that time? Who were the other? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there was Percy Rodriguez I knew of. He was in Montreal and then he went to Hollywood. Oh, okay. But, but 
on stage and stuff like that doing. And then there's Errol Slew came in Montreal. Right. Right? Okay. But there were no other older established actors who we could say, mm. well, ask for advice or mm. anything like that. I remember used to go to actor meetings. Mm -hmm. You know, Jory Drake was there, I was there, and that was it. Mm -hmm. You know?